Hey guys. <clears throat> I know you thought I forgot about you. I didn't forget about you. It has been a week and I am just now catching up on my sleep and getting back some sense of normalcy. So I wanted to come in because I got mail. I got mail. I got mail. <laughs> and um, I want to show you some of the things that I have as a result of stitches. And I just want to talk. I want to talk. Quite a few things have happened that I want to share with you guys. Um, so, you guys ready? I got mail. You know you want to see my mail because I got, I got, I got mail. So we're going to start out with my earrings. <sighs> um, You know, I love a note. It says, hi, gay. My good friends, Judy and Julie, had the pleasure of meeting you at Stitches West. And Judy wanted to send you a pair of earrings because she loved meeting you. And I absolutely love your style. Love, Jennifer. And this is Knitting Takes Balls. Aren't these super cute? They're like plastic, but they're so fun. Are they not fun? Thank you, ladies. These are my ladies. Um, this is probably one of the first pictures in the collage. They were sitting in the calf when uh, Libby and I were having lunch when I first arrived. So thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. So that was mail. Also, if you guys remember Vogue last year, Vogue 2019, and Mochi Mochi Land had made a mini me. Well, she somehow got lost. And I asked her, would she make me another one? And she did. So she will be cherished. I will make sure she is put in a safe place and we will not misplace her again. And I love that this time she made, this looks like my, um, my cape that I made from Knittitude, doesn't it? And it's the perfect orange. She's home again. And that hair, is that hair fab or what? So thank you. And her note says, hope this mini behaves herself. Correct, because the other one must have jumped out of my pocket. But you know what's going to happen now? She wouldn't let me pay for it either. I asked her to make it for me and let me pay her since I misplaced the first one. But watch I find her now that I have another one. But she is back home. That's a mini me. That's a mini me. She's so cute. And we will... And the thing about it is, I recall saying that I needed to put her somewhere so that Gunner wouldn't get to her. And I'm sure that's where she is. I just don't know where that, that would be, to be honest with you. So that was that. Oh, and then 
my Kalisha, you guys know Quirky, Quirky, Mon Quirky Monday, Monday podcast, Quirky, Crafty, you, you guys know Kalisha. Well, she went thrifting and she's found this fabulous orange bag and she thought of me again, perfect Gigi orange. And she also was kind enough to give, because she had asked me had I seen the things that Michaels was offering for Black History Month, and I had not. So she sent us two little patches. This one that says Soul is for Shelby, and this one that says Challenge, Inspire, Hope, and Love is for moi. So thank you, baby doll. Thank you, thank you. I love my bag. It has lots of pockets, and I love the pouches. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So that was mail. I'm looking. I think that was everything that came in the mail. Okay. So now let's just talk about acquisitions and gifts. Acquisitions and gifts. You guys ready? So I'm going to start with acquisitions. So we'll start with what's on my hand. Are you guys familiar with Porterness? She sells jewelry. I stumbled upon her at Vogue. Um, and there was another ring that I fell in love with. But I was walking around. I didn't have my bag with me. Um, it was the last day. It was probably about 30 minutes before it was time for everyone to start breaking down. So I took a card. I said I would go online. She measured my finger the whole nine. Then I saw that she was going to be at Stitches West. So I said, let me just wait. I'll get it while I'm there. Well, come to find out she was there, but she was attending as a customer, a, 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 a crafter. Not She wasn't vending. But she was having a special sale in her hotel room that Melissa of East Spots Chico reminded me about because Melissa had this ring on and I was like, oh my God, I want this ring so bad. I thought she was gonna hit, be here, blah, blah, blah. She told me about the sale in her hotel room and we did some negotiating and she picked it up for me and I have my ring. So that was my large acquisition. And the only other thing that I purchased, because I tried, guys, I tried to spend money, I tried to support, and nobody would take my money. Nobody would take my money. Only person that would take my money, besides Portiness, was Lola Bar. So, if I am correct, I want to say I've heard about this mostly from Christy Glass. Um, I'm accustomed to seeing the other lady at the events that sells the, the bars because it comes in a, in a, a round bar, but I love patchouli. I can honestly tell you just about all of my favorite scents. If I peel back a layer, they all have some sort of patchouli base. Um, everybody can't do patchouli, right? Um, some folks have been very successful at combining patchouli with other things that I absolutely love. But to just get patchouli by itself and do it right is hard to do. And let me tell you, Lola Bars did it right. So much so that I bought one of these. And that night when I showered and got ready for bed, I put it on. I instantly told myself that I was going back downstairs. Soon as those doors opened and I finished doing my job, I made a beeline. I bought another one. So I have two big tens and I bought a little pocket size one that's in my purse that I keep with me. Um, but it's, it's little. It's probably about that big. And I had to have it. And so much so that Christina of Chelsea Yarn, she loves patchouli too. And when I saw her and I went to hug her and we was talking, I went to pull away. She pulled me back. She said, Gigi, what is what patchouli is that? You told me about the other one. So she went and got some too. I even went back before I left 
so I could just stock up. I was going to get another one. She was like, uh, ma'am, she said, I either cannot sell patchouli, she said, which is usually, I usually cannot sell patchouli. She said, but you, ma'am, the patchouli is sold out. I was like, all right, well, good. I'm glad it's sold out. So that was that. Then the other one she had, I don't even know that I will wear this, to be honest with you, because this smells like my mom. My mom used to wear an Egyptian musk oil, and this smells like my mom. So this was a, what's the word I want to say? This was an emotional purchase. I don't even know that I'll put it on. Like when Shelby smelled this, she was like, move this away from me because I'm about to go lay in my bed and cry. This smells exactly like my mom and it's called Nang Champa. So think of an Egyptian musk. Think of a, this smells like my mom. So I held on to her purse for so long after she passed away because when I would open it, I could smell her. I could smell her oil and... This one smells like my mom. So I have that. Then you saw where I met Z and Pam, right? Pam has a channel here. She has a podcast as well. I will link the two of them, Pam and Z, down so you guys can check them out. But she came over and in the playground, you had to show me your haul. That was one of the reasons, one of the time frames I was in the playground. And she had this. So I said, oh, what scent do you have? And this is ginger amber baby baby ginger amber again this is lolo bar this is the body bar yes yes and more yes so i was like oh my god because where where the um playground was where i was sitting she wasn't far i kept peeking i was like i'm gonna run over there before she closes and get me one pam was like no 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 and she ran over and she purchased me one of these. So what I did was, um, I went and got a little mini one to keep in my purse because I love this. So those were my acquisitions because again, I say nobody would take my money. So let's talk about gifts from this part. That was acquisitions. Now we're going to talk about gifts. So this young lady, I'm still trying to locate. I think we took a picture together, but I think she took it on her camera and she gave me a Alex and Annie bracelet and it has an orange stone in it. Isn't that gorgeous, guys? And I can't find her name. I put a call out. I'm going to post another picture of this bracelet. Hopefully she's a part of the YouTube audience and she will identify herself so I can thank her properly. But... I almost forgot about this gift because I put it on and I have yet to take it off. I love my Alex and Andy bracelets. And this is the cutest. And again, perfect shade of orange. So that was one gift. So thank you, thank you. Speaking of orange, you guys know that one of the booths that I was at was my um, orange um competition she thinks she likes orange as much as i do but i beg to differ and that would be christy of uh, birdie parker so if you've been following me on instagram you know that she did a special edition and she said it was very hard to get these leather bands this shade of orange so this is the wrist cuff i think it's called wristband but you can get these i think there's a few left I will link down below. I think there's a few left. Please don't quote me. Don't get angry with me if I'm wrong. I believe there's some left or she might be taking pre-orders. I'm not sure. But so she had this and the, the shawl cuff in the orange. And of course, she would not let me. She wouldn't take my money. So these were a gift. She gave me the cuff as well as the bracelet. Thank you. Now also in her booth was Shiny Weirco. And Shiny reached out to me and asked me, could she use some of my Gigi-isms to make um, tags? So tags that you can put on your 
your knitwear. So like on your hat, this one says iconic. This one says on purpose. And this one says we knit too. So much like Christy, Susan, who is the talent behind these beautiful things, would not take my money either. So those were other gifts. Oh, let me go backwards. I did buy these. So we're going to go in the middle. These are from A Needle Runs Through It. And these are stitch markers. And this is your sweater, sweater helper set. So you have front, back, beginning of the round, right sleeve back, left sleeve front. You got right back, um, right sleeve front, left sleeve back. And then this other set, that sweater helper as well, has make one left and it has the instructions on it, make one right. And it has two of those. Um, you have an SSK. You have a beginning of the round. You have knit two together. Yes, yeah, so you have two knit two togethers, two make one right, two make one left, beginning of the round, SSK. And I love that the, the make ones, the increase, it, ha it reminds you. Because I always have to look them up. I'm the only one that happens to, that happens to, I always have to look up the increase. So I thought these were cute. I also got the sassy ones and I'm not going to show them out here because they are sassy. So I'm just going to give you an ex example. Stitch, please. And it don't say stitch. Or rip that mf -er. They're cute. They're sassy though. And again, that is a needle runs through it. Purchase. That was a purchase. And I did buy, this is thanks to Felicia from Strengthening Studio because she asked me to find them for her. And when I see them, I was like, oh. So I got me a pair and I got me a set and I got Adela a set as well as a gift. So that was that. Um, this was another gift. And I want to say this, Alma gave me this. So this I can put like on, on a necklace or something. It's a, um, a charm. Isn't that beautiful, guys? And it's heavy as glass. So I would need like something sturdy to put that on. But that was a gift. And I thank you. I thank you. Then I have, this is from Esther. It's soap and it's orange. <laughs> thank you, Esther. Thoughtful stuff like that just really warms my heart. And then where is Tanika? bought me my tea bags. She bought me lemonade so I can make my tea in a hotel. But she also make, got me this thing for your tea, like if you have the loose tea. And I love that it's a heart. So thank you, Tanika. That's thoughtful stuff like that. That's really just super cute to me. So thank you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Then I attempted to purchase this shirt from neighborhood fiber co but that didn't go over well either <laughs> so thank you Karina. isn't she gorgeous i love that her hair is up high nice and regal and it's all yarn so that was another gift and that comes from neighborhood fiber co and she told me her name i want to say she said vivian i'm not sure i think she said vivian does it say out here? It doesn't. I think she said Vivian. I think. Then the ladies, the beautiful sisters behind Beautiful Sister was next to Birdie Parker. And they gifted me with another. My other Beautiful Sister bag was a gift from them as well when I was at um, Four Pearls. So if you're not familiar with Beautiful Stitches, in my, my uh, vlog... I think I showed a demo, but I love that this bag, you can fold these in and use it for like a little bucket. You can take this and tie it so that whatever's in here doesn't come out. You can 
naturally hold it on your arm this way and knit as you walk around and carry your business. So that is beautiful, sister. They have beautiful material and they are the sweetest. And I wanna say they're out of Chicago, but beautiful, beautiful sisters. And this bag is called Heather. And that print is beautiful. So that was a gift. Let's see. This came from Alexandra, The Art of Yarn. And this, if I find, I think I have a picture of the cape that this kit is for, and it's a, a mosaic knitting. I've never done mosaic knitting, so I'm gonna give it a try. But she gifted me this. And I think I jinxed myself, guys, because I was sitting there saying, for the first time, I'm not being, because I didn't, bring a big bag like I was packed I you know I had to wind up checking my bag coming back because I didn't have room for anything and at the end people started here Gigi here Gigi here Gigi and yeah close hands can't get your blessings right so where I usually say come on guys you don't have to do that but I thought this is really thoughtful so if I have the picture I'll put it there if not I'll put the information in the down bar the cape is beautiful and again mosaic knitting is new for me um then you have my honey lamb from 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 anzula fiber so let me tell you a story here anzula is the first company that i purchased luxury yarn this is a cashmere base but it's on her bulky my first i want to say it's worth it it's for 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 better or for worse it is my first luxury it has uh cashmere in it i made this orange poncho that i sold on my uh etsy shop from anzula so it was nice to see her and why she did this i don't know but she gave me three skeins of her burley which is her bulky base and this is a 80 10 10 superwash merino cashmere nylon but on a bulky base so that was a gift and then the ladies or the owner of forbidden fiber ran over and brought me this with the sparkles in it that's pretty i could see a nice like shawl or something because this is a fingering and this is called Roaring Twenties Collection Pride. So that's pretty. And it kind of ebbs and flows color-wise. So that was a gift. And then I feel bad because every time I walked past, he gave me the biggest smile and the biggest hug. And I can't remember the name of his booth. But he tried to give me a bunch of these. I worked, made him back down and just give me two. But these come from Rama, Rama, am I saying that? Rama Garn. And it doesn't say the name of the company, but he gave me the two shades of orange, which is really pretty. So that was that. And then you guys know about Gigi Loves Orange from Madeline Tosh, right? Guys, just, I don't know what to say with this collab. I don't know what to say, but this is the Gigi Loves Orange and Madeline Tosh, which is what I'm using to make my Orange Love Poncho, Orange, pon orange Love Poncho, yes, and that's, for the knit along as well. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna end with the knit along. But this is, this is the Gigi Loves Orange. So, a lot of you have been asking me to give you the story behind 
this beauty here. So I don't know that I can even say that there's a story, but I can tell you what happened. First, I'm gonna bring her closer so that you guys can see the details. There's beads in there, the eyebrows and the eyelashes and the eyes, the nose around the lips, that's all embroidered. Look at her hair, guys. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this without crying. So I am in the marketplace, it's actually time. This was Saturday, it was time for me to go to Coco Knits. And I hear somebody say, oh, there she is. And I look up and there's two women and I, you know, I smile at everybody, hi. And she had this in her hand, but she had it folded this way. And I saw that she had something in her hand, but, right? So she's like, I came here just for you. She was like, I wanted to thank you for being who you are. She said, most importantly, I want to thank you for being unapologetically you. She said, you say things that I think and I feel, but I don't have the heart to say it. So I'm like, oh, thank you. She said, and I want to show you something is what she said first. I want to show you something. And she opened it. Right. So right away, I'm like, oh, my God, that's beautiful. Oh, my God. And then slowly but surely, guys, I was like, wait, there's a lot of orange in there. And then I looked at the eyes. And I said, wait, is that me? And then she kept after that. I can honestly tell you everything that she was saying to me became a blur because I became so overwhelmed at that point. Just <sighs> overwhelmed. So I want to share some other things with you guys in relation to this, but her name is Q Doll. Q Doll Maker, is it 54? I'll make sure I tag her. But guys, there's quilting, there's beading, there's embroidery, there's knitting. There's, I'm thinking this hair. Now I'm looking closer. That's, that's knitted too. Just unbelievable. So I am taking this to Paige the Framer. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Paige, but she is a framer as well as she runs a yarn shop. It's called Frame and Fiber. It's in South Jersey. So I'm going to take this to Paige because I want it in a shadow box so I can protect her. But guys, talk about a gift. That blew my mind. Blew my mind. So... I'm going to reverse this. We're going to talk about the, the knit along and then I just, I, I want to talk. Okay, so I'm having my first knit along, my first, my first knit along. And it's ironic because I always thought with knit alongs that everybody had to be working at the same pace, which is something that always turned me off about them because once you give me a deadline or you start giving me restrictions it takes the fun out of it for me am i by myself with that so at any rate i've always 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 had you guys say you should have a knit along you should have a knit along and i'm like i don't even know what that means so no thank you right but because i'm so proud of the poncho and the yarn and this collab with madeline tosh and jimmy bean i just Okay, dreams come true. Dreams come true, my God. So anyway, let's talk about, oh, excuse me, guys. Let's talk about the Gigi Orange Love Knit Along. It starts on March 15th, right? The pattern is the Orange Love Poncho, which you can find on Ravelry. I will put the link in the down bar. The yarn is the Madeline Tosh. And forgive me for looking down, guys, because I don't want to, um, not include anything. The yarn is Madeline Taj. Gigi loves orange. However, you can use any worsted weight yarn you like. Um, I have a Ravelry group now. So 
If you're going to join us, go to the rivalry group. It's Gigi Made It, the name of the group, and respond to as going to the Cal party so we know who's participating. There's going to be 12 prizes for those who knit the poncho. <clears throat> Remaining prizes will be for anyone who knits anything that's orange, right? Please have all your finished objects uploaded to the FO thread by the morning of May 1st as prize winners will be drawn there. The Cal starts on March 15th and you have until April 6th, 26th. So you got six weeks. And the poncho is, there are cables and there are bobbles, but it's doable for those of you that are new or uncomfortable with cables and bobbles. My plan is to put some, I'm working on it now. So I'm going to start doing some little tutorials to show you guys how to do it um, to help out because it's basically a rectangle. You just have a panel of about 38 stitches, I think, something around there where you do your little extra business. Um, but other than that, it's smooth sailing. So come and join us. I think it's going to be fun. So here's the other part that was a little spooky for me, and that was getting don't getting sponsorship, people to sponsor gifts for me. Well, you ready for the sponsors? We have Jimmy Bean, Lola Bean, Coco Knits, Birdie Parker, Shiny Wear Co., Remembrance Pottery, um, Fearless Feet, Fiber Company, Fish Belly Fireworks, Heidi Designs, Yarn Social, Skein Cocaine, Magpie Fibers, Hohe, West Knits, Espas Trico, Designs by Yasmin, One Geek to Craft Them All. Baby, there's going to be some fabulous gifts, okay? There's, if for no other reason, join so that you can have a chance to get one of these gifts. Um, so again, you have time to order your yarn. You have time to get your, your pattern and you have time to join the group. We're going to start on the 15th. I'm going to start working on some tutorials to work up to it, to get everybody psyched. Don't let the bobbles or the cables turn you off because they are doable. Remember, on purpose, right? We can do whatever we want on purpose when that is the goal. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the Ravelry group. I'll put the link in the down bar. So now I want to talk. So I'm going to start this off by reading a note that was left. And then it will kind of segue into what's heavy on my chest. So... I'm not sure what, what the post was, but the response from one of my followers, her name is Chris Woods, and I was she gave me permission to share this. And she wrote, Gigi, do you know that you've changed the world for us colored girls who knit, right? You've paved the way for us to attend these events, have folks be welcoming instead of weary, which is part of my experience. You created the world you wanted, and every day when I see your post, which I set your post to appear first in my feed, I believe I can do the same. You're an amazing gift to us, just as you are, and I'm thank you. So first, let me say to you that I am a big old crybaby, and that reduced me to a puddle of tears. I was stuck in my car, crying my eyes out, because that just touched me in an unexpected way. So let's rewind just for a moment back to January of 2019, where the conversation of diversity and inclusion came up. And you still have people to this day that feel like we should just knit. And I don't think they understand the, imp the importance of someone that looks like me truly feeling comfortable in this industry, truly feeling comfortable, welcomed in this community. So now let's fast forward to Stitches West. I will say to you that 90% of that um, customer base does not look like me, 90%. And I'm probably being generous. It's probably higher than that. But every black person that I saw and I'm not saying every other, I'm saying every black person that I saw stopped me, whether they knew who I was or not, 
hugged me so tight and thanked me for being there. Not because I'm Gigi, not because I knit, not because of the orange craze, but because I was black. You had the woman that was volunteering. She works for them. Every time I walked past her, she grabbed my hand and she rubbed her thumb on the back of my hand. And to black people, we know that means, hi, I see you, right? So for me to come home and then have someone write that note, for Chris to write that note, her not being a part of Stitches and not knowing the experience that I had just drove home the fact that January needed to happen. You have people that have knit in silence, not gone into yarn shops, would not attend these events for the fear of being the only one there, right? So me going for, like, and I had to tell Ben, the CEO, of the Stitches organization, or XRX, I believe is the full name of their company. But I had to tell him, I said, Ben, I need you to understand that there's a difference between being welcome and being tolerated. I'm going to say that again. There's a difference between being welcome and being tolerated. So you guys know from my Vogue video recap, I said that there was times where I felt FOMO about different things that I wasn't a part of or watching people do events that I wasn't invited to, feeling some kind of way. But this year, I was with Adela. My baby was there. I was home. I was in a space where I was comfortable. I knew that I was welcome. And I knew that I could be comfortable there and I didn't have to wonder if... I was being tolerated if I was the token. Let's be nice to Gigi because that's the end thing to do. You guys follow me? So I'm going to also say to you guys that I was uncomfortable about going to Stitches by myself. Shelby couldn't get the time off. And usually you guys know my baby is with me or someone else that I know that I could be comfortable. And I was uncomfortable. I know what it looks like here when I go to these events, how I can be um, stopped over and over by tons of people. And I love it. But sometimes I like to have that buffer, somebody that can pull me away, somebody that can make sure that I'm on time for whatever I have to go to next. So that one thing, I was uncomfortable. The second thing was, there's a few people out there that I know that I that follow me, we talked to, that was looking forward to me coming. But from the way I understood it, the majority of the people out there had no clue who I was. And I was not sure how I was going to be received. So pile on top of that, my first flight, I had a layover in the frozen tundra. Can we talk about why it was negative six degrees in Minnesota, people? Ugh. Anyway. I get on the plane here in Newark, in Newark, in Newark, New Jersey, the most diverse place ever, Newark, New Jersey. And six o'clock flight, it's five something in the morning. I'm walking my um, seat partner, neighbor. She was already in the seat. So I spotted her before she spotted me. She was smiling. She was laughing. She was talking to people. So I was like, oh, cool. We're going to have a good time before I fall asleep because sleep, here I come. I stopped at that seat. That woman clutched her purse. She almost climbed into that window. And I'm like, so I put on my biggest smile. I said, good morning. She all but scoffed at me. I said, okay. So I sat down, got myself comfortable, whatever. I paid, for, this seat was paid for just like yours and whatever. So thankfully the plane wasn't full. And I asked the stewardess, cause when I turned around and asked her, we made eye contact. So I'm aware that she kind of watched the whole thing happen. And I said to her, can I move my seat? And she said, when we close that door, you can sit wherever you want. So the silver lining in all of this is 
I was able to sit and I had a whole row to myself, stretch out, put my legs up, relax on that first, the first leg of the flight was what, like two hours, I think. I don't even remember because I slept the entire way. But I say all that to say, this inclusive thing, this diversity thing is a thing. It's not a fad. It's not for likes. It's a part of my life. Um, but the part that bothered me was not so much what the lady did, but I took a picture and I shared it on my social media. And I can't tell you how many people tried to justify her actions. I can't tell you how many people, oh, Gigi, she didn't know who you, who you were. I don't know why anybody on that plane would know who I was. Oh, Gigi, maybe she was just afraid to fly. Maybe, you know, she was going to a funeral. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Everybody tried to downplay, not everybody, but folks tried to downplay my experience. I am not a kid. I am 53 years old, will be 54 this year. I know why that woman clutched her pocketbook. I know why she tried to get as close to that window as she possibly could. And it had nothing to do with the fact, because I even sniffed myself. I did not stink. I checked. It's possible. I didn't stink. I didn't have no makeup on, but I don't look like a monster. I also wasn't frowning. I think my smile is very welcoming. That woman clutched her purse and tried to get as far away from me as possible for one reason and one reason only, and that is the color of my skin. So for folks to try to tell me, just like folks will say to me, if I say I had a bad experience at a yarn shop, they didn't know it was you. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means other than please don't try to downplay my experience because I know exactly what that woman's issue is. Even when it was time to get off the plane, you had to see her scooting up as close as possible to the man in front of her as if if I touched her, it was going to rub off. It's not contagious. It's not. I know everybody's crazy about the coronavirus. Black ain't contagious. I if I touch you, you're not, I promise you're not going to turn black. So that started my trip. I was already having butterflies. But the next airport, a woman walks up to me and she's like, excuse me, are you going to Stitches? I'm like, I am. She said, are you Gigi? And I went from feeling like crap to back to me again, right? So yes, there are kind people in the world. It's unfortunate that the ugly people their actions sting and it takes a little longer for you to move past them. But I'm going to say this and I want to say this to anybody that sincerely is willing to change or to address the elephant in the room. If someone tells you that they were discriminated against, if someone tells you that they had an experience that they know it's because they are other, please don't try to give them excuses as to why someone treated them like crap. Then I'm going to leave that at that. So I'm proud that my people, and I'm saying black people on purpose because, you know, the term person of color just puts this big umbrella over quite a few different people. But the reality of the matter is if you put us all in the room and it was a matter of who was going to be mistreated or ignored or thought of as less than, I would be first on that list. Okay. So I felt good that my people, I made my people feel good. Like I felt like I was doing something for my culture. You know, it just, um, you don't know how many, like there was one woman, she's probably old enough to be my auntie. Okay, she hugged me so tight. And she said, baby, I'm so proud of you. She was like, I don't even know. I saw your picture in the email. And I said, oh, she said, I didn't even know who you was. I had to do some investigating. But I said, I bet you I'm going to see that baby because they got her scheduled and she she doing meeting the stuff and people must really love her. I'm going to see. It, it just felt good, guys. So I'm saying all this to say that Giving somebody that is different than you, they're just due, doesn't take any way, anything away from you. There is enough room in this big old world for all of us. It really, really is. And at the end of the day, the very, very end of the day, 
We are all human, all of us, different flavors, but we're all human. Okay, so, so think about that. Think about that. The next time that someone shares an experience with you, that is their experience. So I'm gonna leave you with this. It's my toe and it's my pain. You don't get to tell me that it didn't hurt. I'll see you guys next week.